My name is Jason, and I'm lazy, exceedingly lazy. <laughs> Not only lazy, but oh, whoa, sad. And I know this when I tried to train my pet guinea pig to retrieve a remote control for me, so I wouldn't have to get up and miss watching three seconds of Glee. Over the course of a three-week holiday, I built myself into a kind of a 90 centimeter by 90 centimeter hole. That's my hole. So I plopped myself in front of the TV, next to my computer, and within arm's reach of my Xbox, my mother called it my hole of shame. I called it my hole of super ingenious world-saving brilliance. Needless to say, we both agreed it was pretty much a hole. So as I was in my hole, suffering an extremely bad carpal tunnel, I had a sudden streak of serendipity. My parents always reminded me that my generation will be the one that inherits this planet, so I've got to start getting involved and active. So, start an Amnesty International youth chapter, hold a recycling day at my school, help pack home hampers for the homeless, or start writing encouraging letters to refugee children. Just start doing something, they always tell me. So, whilst I'm ignoring my parents' psycho-Asian babble, I think to myself, you know, as much as I would love to spend my spare time wrapping up Franklin's home brand margarine for homeless people, or writing encouraging letters to refugee kids telling them to hang in there, wouldn't it just be so much better to stay at home and watch TV? So, gasp. Before you send me to a therapist like my parents did, Hear me out. Here's my idea worth spreading. Is it possible that by being bad, lazy, stupid teenagers today, we can become better, more caring, more enthusiastic adults tomorrow? <laughs> all right, so to make it easier for you to understand, I've broken it all up into three steps. The first one, watch more TV. The second one, play more World of Warcraft. The third one, add more strangers on Facebook. So I know what you're thinking, because I'm psychic. Actually, I'm not, but I'm not going to stand up here and blab on and on about the virtues of the Discovery Channel, ABC News, or National Geographic, because I don't actually watch any of those. Because if you do watch too much National Geographic, ABC News, or Discovery, this is exactly what you will turn into. Also, it seems that the only decent programs on the Discovery Channel these days are either about sharks or sex transplants, neither of which I'm interested in. So if you're a parent, you're probably more angry than you are confused. You'll probably think to yourself, how is it possible that by watching stupid cartoons, we can learn more than by watching Shark Week? Well, this is how. Malcolm Gladwell said that all it takes to become an expert at something is watching 10,000 hours of deliberate practice. Watching National Geography for 10,000 hours will make you an expert in knowing extremely large quantities of trivial information about sharks, the migratory patterns of sardines, and suspension bridges. But how will that make you a better person in any way? We need to watch more TV that doesn't aim to educate, but instead aims to inspire and entertain. <laughs> you see, in the late 1980s, Fisk and Hartley, two English scholars, proposed a now widely accepted theory that TV can be read in the same way that a book can be read. It's also now widely accepted that teenagers are highly impressionable and learn from imitation. Hence the quote, show me who you are and I'll show you what you are. And we need to watch more TV from channels like Fox Aid, Comedy Central, MTV, or W. So back to Glee. Take a look at Glee. Glee's the type of TV that we should be watching more of. If the world was more like the world of Glee, it'd be a much better place. And all you really need to like, you know, know this is to look at the cast. It's like the producers of Glee decided to play a sick game where they tried to shove as many minorities into the same hour-long block. <laughs> Jewish, black, Jewish with gay parents, a jock from a disabled family, pregnant teenage mother, disabled, even though you can't really see it, Asian and gay. I like to call it the ethnic rainbow. So regardless of the plot and the catchy show tunes, the message that Gleam is screaming at teenagers is that being different is a seamless part of life. Yeah. 
Take a look at The Simpsons, for example, one of the world's most loved and watched TV shows. And its plot is almost always drawn around Homer's incessant willingness to put his family's well-being, safety, and even lives on the line to achieve his own self-centered goals. But whatever Homer does in every single episode, he always does the right thing by his family at the end of the day, proving that The Simpsons is a show as much about family, honesty, love, friendship, and all those other corny happy things as it is about emu farming. I talked earlier about how teenagers read TV. Well, they read it by examining patterns. And shows like The Simpsons highlight these patterns that no matter how bad, self-centered, or disgusting something may be, there's always a good moral center. In fact, all TV is educational. The question simply is, what is it teaching and is it relevant? That was a quote from Nicholas Johnson, the former Federal Communications Commissioner of the US. Which brings me on to my second point. Play more World of Warcraft. Oh wait, ignore that. <laughs> I was, to put it nicely, crucified by Triple J's hack session for advocating MMORPGs. If you were listening to Triple J at 5.30 yesterday, you would know this. In particular, I was attacked mainly for supporting WoW. In fact, one very rude caller texted it in to tell me that the internet is solely for wanking and bonking, and it's time that you learn to court on. Well, sir, you are a sex addict and you need serious help. <laughs> in my defense, I quote actress Mila Kunis, star of that 70s show, who recently defended her highly publicized love of World of Warcraft by saying, in my opinion, it's easy to hold your life together and play MMOs. Of course, there are a lot of people who get sucked in and waste their lives, but they use WoW as an escape from reality. As long as you aren't sitting in front of a computer screen for 12 hours a day, there's nothing wrong. And if you are doing that, you have a problem. <coughs> WoW, like EVE Online, Warhammer Online, DC Universe Online, Forsaken World, and EverQuest, are different from the traditional computer game archetypes because of their heightened level of user interaction. Traditional computer games can teach us a lot. I learned almost everything I know today from the Greek mythology of Age of Empires, Titan's expansion pack, but let's be honest, excessive non-interactive computer gaming can turn you into a sociopath. <laughs> Okay, right, so I'm currently obsessed with a game called Minecraft. In this game called Minecraft, it's possible to build things out of tiny little blocks that challenge real world concepts of physics, but you can never do it alone. Things like this, this, or this, and maybe even this, can't be achieved by one single person. Minecraft Online embodies everything that is positive about online games. Alone, you can never achieve something. You have to find a like-minded group of individuals. Oh, that's a sociopath, by the way. <laughs> I had about two hours of sleep over a 48-hour period of time at this point. So that's you alone. You can never achieve anything you want to achieve alone in the online world. But together with a group of like-minded individuals <laughs> who share the same goals as you, you can achieve anything. The reality is you don't know them that well, they don't even know you, but what they do know is that you also want to achieve what they do, and they're willing to trust you and work with you to achieve a similar goal. So if you take situations we're faced with in the Warcraft world, and you take situations we face in the real world, they share a lot of similarities. Not really, because elves aren't real, but maybe one day they will be, and we can always dream. So, it's become a well-known and accepted fact that we have to start working together with, native, with the native people of places like Afghanistan and Iran if we ever want to stop major problems such as terrorist insurgency. But people like this, who grew up glorifying shooting and death instead of whamming, refuse to really view the world this way. That's where teenagers who play well, wow come into it. <laughs> They've lived out the situation so many times in the virtual world where they're forced to rely on strangers that it becomes a learned response to trust rather than seize up and spaz out trigger happy style. This is my third point. Add more strangers on Facebook. 
Facebook, it's a new MSS, SMS. It's long overtaken MySpace, and I can't even remember what IMS is anymore. It's also become the eternal bane of the 2010 parent, and the newest and greatest companion of the lazy teenager. I'm a recovering Facebook addict. I went for a wild Facebook binge phase when I was 14, and now that I'm 15, I'm a lot wiser because of it, but I won't deny that my years of wild social networking hedonism haven't benefited me. Okay, I can only imagine that you're exceedingly uncomfortable right now. You know, our parents always told us, never talk or accept candy from strangers, and now I'm telling you to share your entire life with them. Think of it this way. Facebook is like one massive party, right? There are some people you know, some people you've heard of, and a whole bunch of people you've never met before. As long as you obey the basic rules of a party, you should be fine. Watch your drink like a hawk. Always stay in pairs. Never go upstairs with strangers you've never met before when you're drunk. Never accept small plastic bags filled with white powder from weird looking people. And most definitely don't talk to the weirdos in the corner. If you obey these basic rules, you'll have a good time. Meet new people and form new connections. How many of you can honestly tell me that you've never walked away from a party without meeting at least one new person? Facebook is like that party. It's just 10,000 times larger, minus the alcohol, drugs, and sex, and pressure to mingle. <laughs> My parents, when they were younger, had a pen pal. What is it about pen pals that everyone seems to think is so wholesome? The idea of having a Facebook account seems to be the new veritable-based sin that our parents see in us. But pen pals are considered wholesome when, look what you're really doing when you get a pen pal. You're sharing your personal details, you're telling your secrets, and you're sending photos of yourself to an unknown person who lives halfway across the world. Facebook is, exact, is, le sorry, is the exact same thing. The only difference is that it's instant, that you can access so much more information, and you, connect, you can connect with thousands of people, not some weird, lonely girl who's desperate for attention and desperately wants a friend living in Michigan. I mentioned my wild youth days when I went insane and decided to add a Lebanese friend for every letter of the word Hezbollah. My mother soon put an end to my friend requesting, but not before I boasted my friend count to 700. It was around Christmas 2008 that I got a request to join a group by one of my obscure Middle Eastern Facebook friends, a group called Irani Students for Democratic Reform. In a single second, Facebook opened my eyes to the brutal police crackdown on peaceful student protests on the street of Tehran. That ended with the loss of hundreds of lives, all delivered to me via Facebook long before it was ever reported on the news. Another friend suggested the group, Students for a Free Tibet. Again, Facebook mailed me a shocking picture of oppression, torture, and suffering long before the news or any newspaper ever did. Being friends with strangers does two things for us. It educates us, like Twitter and YouTube. Facebook is fast becoming a preferred form of, educate, of informational distribution. A lot of the information that's on Facebook and Twitter is highly relevant to our lives now and uncensored. When peacefully protesting Iranian citizens became victims of their government, they screamed for help on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, not CNN News. But secondly, and most importantly, it helps us realize that no matter where you are in the world, and no matter who you are, you are nothing more than simply another person. That's a cat. <laughs> a lot of parents and a lot of older people struggle to like, you know, will struggle to come to terms with everything I've said today. And it's mainly, I'd come, I, sorry, I put this down to the fact that technological rules have changed. Rules advance with technology, social boundaries advance with technology. When my parents grew up, these were their rules. I am grown up with these rules. I'm not afraid of the internet. To a lot of adults, the internet is a seemingly massive world of bright colors, funny pictures, and links. We are not afraid of the internet. To us, it's nothing more than our second home, really. My mother still calls tweeting, sorry, my mother still calls Twitter tweetering. It's really actually quite sad. My dad actually ran away from a computer once. He was trying to send an email to his friend. He accidentally clicked a rather unsavory link and there was stuff about donkeys and midgets and <laughs> elderly citizens. <laughs> Our society faces a lot of problems today. 
there's global warming, there's also genocide, and we're slowly tottering towards an international resource deficiency. Not only that, but there's a lot of problems within teenage society now. We have self-consciousness problems, and yet we're fatter than ever. Not only that, but we're scared, and she's still alive. <laughs> the solution to these problems there is no solution. I don't offer you a definite solution. I only offer you an idea. An idea that by letting teenagers be teenagers, we can perhaps form a solution in future that can help us solve these problems. And if you don't believe me, here's some proof. This is a website called We Feel Fine. It accumulates all blog postings that start with the word I feel or we feel. This was I feel fine five years ago. It seems pretty good, but we felt bad and sorry back then. This is We Feel Fine from yesterday. Better, good, positive, and right. As we develop with the internet, we've learned to grow into better people. So it's time that parents shoved off and let us live our lives the way we want to do, because it will end up saving their asses. Thank you so much.